Hello everybody, my name is Will and welcome back to Sprocket. Today we're going to be building a tank with uh, two turrets, which may not sound like a particularly large amount of turrets given some of the things we've done in the past, but these turrets are arranged in a slightly different way to the turrets that you may be used to me putting on a multi-turreted tank. So most of the time when I have multiple turrets, it's one big turret and then smaller turrets either to the sides or in front and behind, kind of in a super firing arrangement. That's not going to be what we're doing today. Today, we're going to be taking a hint out of America's book with the M2A2 light tank, which some of you may be familiar with from just before World War II, I think. Uh, quite a lot before World War II, probably. I think it was 1920s-ish. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it, was, it was a f weird little tank uh, where you have one turret uh, next to another one, and in one turret you've got a Browning 303, in the other turret you've got a Browning 50 cal, um, and that is your armament, basically. Um, I think they were crewed by two people, so a turret each, um, and the driver just had to drive as well as uses tar I don't really know. A uh, little bit of a unique <laughs> machine, the M2A2 light tank, but um, yeah, uh, if you Google M2A2, you'll probably just get Bradley's, um, and if you've already Googled M2A2 and just got Bradley's, um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> not that one. We're not building a Bradley today. Uh, no. This thing is going to be inspired by another tank called M2, because America and their naming conventions are just the most inventive things ever. Uh, honestly, if you look up M1, there's an endless amount of things named M1 in America. Um, <clears throat> but there you go. I guess I, their naming conventions just were made to be as confusing as possible. Sorry guys, that's just the way it is. But um, <laughs> regardless, this is based off the M2 medium tank, the slightly bigger version of uh, America's stupid designs at the time. Uh, it was the predecessor to the M2 Lee, and much in the way that the M2 Lee, the M th M3 Lee, sorry, uh, the in much the way that the M3 Lee was ridiculous and stupid, the M2 was ridiculous and stupid. Um, <laughs> it had this weird diamond shape for the driver's port in the front um, that just kind of came up from the front, so they were kind of using armor angling, but not enough to actually really be effective, and the armor was like paper anyway. Um, and then there were these turrets in the sides of the hulls facing forwards and backwards with machine guns in. Um, and then obviously you've got your big turret on top with a 37 and a coaxial machine gun. Uh, and on mounted on the side of the turret of that thing, uh, they could fit some machine guns for the crew. Um, <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure there was also a driver's machine gun. I'm not sure about that one though. I don't... There may, there may not have been. Um... They really like their machine guns with this one, is what I'm trying to get at here. Uh, <laughs> anywhere they could realistically put a machine gun, there was a machine gun. So, if you were an infantryman and you didn't have any kind of anti-tank weapon, granted you didn't need ex a much of an anti-tank weapon, a particularly high-powered revolver would probably go through the side of one of these things, but um, if you don't have any of that kind of stuff, probably quite scary to be entirely honest, but um, yeah, I don't think they saw action in World War II, as far as I'm aware. I think they were fully replaced um, by the time that America got involved by the M3 Lee and subsequently the M4 Sherman. Um, but regardless, the M2 medium existed. Um, you can It has a Wikipedia page. That's enough for me. Um, I think, therefore, I am. I have a Wikipedia article, therefore I'm important. Um, it's the same kind of line of logic, really, there. But yeah, um... This is kind of a hard design to replicate, to be entirely honest. It's mostly not a replica. Uh, the front looks a little bit more convincing than the back does, if you want to take this as a replica. Um, but I didn't go for replica, I just had it in my head. I was told, I was told, dead, requested to do a tank with two turrets side by side, and I thought that just doing it on an M2A2 wasn't going to be fun enough, so here we are, putting it on an M2 without the A2. Um, yeah, I didn't really think that one through. I, I 
decided I didn't want to do it on one tank named M2, and I picked another tank called M2 to put it on, uh, which is a little bit of an oversight on my behalf, to be entirely honest. <laughs> but now, it's time for the difficult part of this design. If I just put one big turret in the center there, it would probably look like a fairly normal tank, but here we are not doing that. We're putting two small turrets side by side, which just throws the proportions so far off. Um, I also don't know where the people manning the machine guns would actually fit in this thing with these turrets side by side, as well as like there's that door so there can't be a turret basket for these turrets given that the door would then just open up into a basket rather than opening up into any kind of a space where the crew can stand so if you're in this thing I guess the logic I've decided here is that you're just kind of rotating <laughs> on the floor um, in order to actually follow along with the turret. Not exactly the most ideal thing in the world, but uh, you know what? It's been done before and it'll be done again. <laughs> um, and here we are, putting on our armament of choice for today. And our armament of choice is fairly significant for an interwar tank. Um, it falls off, I've got to say, <laughs> uh, when you start getting to some of the later levels, but... Um, yeah, we don't go through all the levels today because this thing is so unfathomably useless that I didn't think it genuinely worth my time to try and upgrade this thing to actually have a purpose. Believe it or not, putting two turrets side by side on a tank like this shape, not a great plan. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure if I made some more extensive changes to the hull uh, and the side pontoons, maybe we could get something done. But frankly, we'd have to sacrifice the side guns, which we already do in order to get it to early war. And at that point, I felt like I was losing the original spirit of the design. Uh, not technically requested to have four guns, but the four guns, it, it felt necessary, you know? <laughs> As soon as it was replaced with two machine guns, I couldn't use them anymore, and that was just, there was no fun in that. I designed those turrets to be using them, so this will remain pretty much just an interwar design, um, which is probably a good thing, given that is where the M2 in real life stayed. I, I am actually quite proud of the look of this thing, to be entirely honest, but... Um, yeah, it's pretty much done here, so I know this has been a little bit of a shorter building segment than usual, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the rest of it, I'm basically just riveting it, so <laughs> it's not exactly the most riveting content in the world. <laughs> okay, we're going to do the gameplay now before I make any more awful jokes. Okay, so here is our tank for today, and uh, yeah, it's got a couple more turrets than you're probably used to on a tank. Um, we got two up top here, which is a little bit of a weird arrangement, side by side, uh, and then we also have these two little pontoon turrets on the hull, uh, on the actual M2 medium, which this thing is roughly, should we say, based on. <laughs> they, yeah, they're machine guns, but uh, here I've just given them four 37mm cannons, all exactly the same, because Eh, why not? <laughs> this probably won't be the best tank ever made. I will level with you, but we'll find out approximately now. Here at Ambush, uh, we are going to have to fight a lot of tanks. We only have two of these things because they're not the lightest things in the world. Good start, though. Um, right, let's see what we can do here. Our crew is very, very much overworked in this tank. Uh, they have so many jobs going on because each of them has a gun to fire and a gun to load uh, and then you have to also have the commander and all of that other malarkey so this is going to be a bit of a challenge for my poor crew to deal with but uh, <laughs> so far they seem to be coping all right uh, they're just not able to aim the gun up and horizontally at the same time hi bud uh, now, the annoying part is every single time we want to swap guns, it resets the zoom on our camera. Uh, so I may genuinely just give up <laughs> swapping the guns at some point and just fire all four at the same time. Um, but uh, for now, we're kind of stuck with it. I don't think you can go back to firing all four after firing one separately. I, I'm sure there's a way, I just don't know it. Um, however, we have a job to do. we got to flank this tank destroyer and somehow get through the side armor of that thing with these puny little 37 mils. And that ain't gonna be the easy. There. Huh. All right, never mind. 
Okay, here we are in the desert. There's four of us, five of them. Uh, there's a couple of tanks that can spawn in the desert that are going to be, uh, how do you say, nigh on impossible to penetrate. And uh, they just already put a shot through me from across the map. I have no idea where it went through, but uh, it's not done much. Uh, hello, you are a panzer tractor. We've dealt with those before. Uh, firing all four of these guns at once is quite the spectacle, <laughs> I've got to say. Um, it is it is an enjoyable spectacle. Um, right, okay. Let's just, I don't know, just hold the fire button. Um, eventually, one of these guns might be vaguely aimed in his direction. I think one hit. Uh, yeah, that did the job. <laughs> eventually. Okay, we have two mana wars. There's one there, and here's one here. We know exactly where to shoot. The question is, will we get the chance to shoot there? He is turning to face me rather snappily. Uh, I would like to take out his track, but I don't know if I really have any kind of ability to do so. Uh, we are not really controlling this tank at this point in time. Uh, do not do that. I, I need you to not be moving your hull. I need you to be moving your turret only. <laughs> We're barely outrunning his guns. Uh, hopefully we don't shoot ourselves here. There we go. Dealt with it. Um, we do have uh, traverse limitations on these turrets. So in theory, we shouldn't ever accidentally fire a shot into our own turrets. But uh, that's nothing that hasn't happened before. <laughs> there we go. Man of War down. Um, surprisingly, quite an effective tank up until this point. But um, let's see... <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if Railroad treats it with the same dignity. Okay, here we are at Railroad, and this time we are in the early war era, and we have, instead of 37s up top, we have 47s. Still got the 37s down below, uh, but obviously we have a couple of upgrades just from going to the new era, so we are a little bit quicker. We are a little bit uh, more armoured, just because we could save some weight, um, and also we have a little bit more penetration on those 37s, even though they are exactly the same guns. So, uh... Yeah, that's that's nice. We'll see if it's enough, but uh, it's nice to have. There's a mana war up on that hill, which we might just be able to do something about here. We'll see. Uh, maybe not. It's very close to being able to go through, but not quite there. Maybe at this angle, it's a little bit more favourable. Never mind. It's much worse, in fact. Uh, <laughs> he did not give me that for long, did he? Oh, no. No, that's a hell yeah. Um, right. This is going to be what some of us call difficult. <laughs> um, I don't really have a plan here, to be honest. The Helliots scare me so much um, because those things are just <laughs> so well armoured um, with very good guns. So, hmm... Let's see if this develops anywhere in our favour. See, there's a mana war over there. I just don't think there's any way we're ever going to penetrate him. Uh, he has 100 millimetres of frontal armour. We can only go through about 50 um, to 70 if we're loading the AP. We can angle, uh, we can pray, but I don't think there's much in it here. <laughs> Not a chance. Okay, so tweaks have been made in order to save uh, what functionality this tank has left in it. Um, so we've swapped these top turrets to 57s, and now these little pontoons have goofy little 303 machine guns in them. Uh, so we'll see if this is any better. Um, kind of putting all my eggs in two baskets, uh, two baskets in terms of turret baskets on top of my hull. Get it? Because eggs and you don't worry about it um but yeah in theory these guns are a little bit better um they should be able to go through around 80 millimeters of armor which isn't great but um i think it should be enough to go through what we need to go through not the heliots of course because i frankly i don't really know why the heliots are classed in the same league as things like the <laughs> Uh, BT4M is it's called, cool, isn't it? But uh, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm sure it's fine. Uh, we just need to actually kill something here. Um, and this guy 
he took one to the side of the turret and it went through, but it's not taking him out. Um, and again, maybe APHE? There we go, never mind. We don't need it. It's fine. Uh, look at that. 290 millimeters of effective armor. No way! <laughs> Can't do that. Not in a million years. Uh, that is not a good camera angle in the slightest. Uh, ah, I see what's happening. That is the wrong side of the tank to be on. And over there somewhere. Ah, there we go. Much better. <laughs> I barely did anything. Okay, so what I would normally do at this point is develop our tank and make it a little bit better, but instead what we're going to be doing is, because this tank is so frightfully unlikely to get any better than this, <laughs> we're going to do a little bit of a custom battle. So, we've got the tank destroyer, what tips over all the time. We have a couple of the 37mm armed quad cannon versions of these, a couple of the 257mm versions of these, and a couple of these, where is it? There it is, the British cruiser tanks that we built a couple of episodes ago, and that is going to be fighting a bit of a cacophony of enemy tanks. We have these little T26 look-alike things, Valentine look-alikes, our armoured cars, uh, and somewhere in this mess of enemies, there should also be the Anzio. <laughs> a big boy, so that is going to be an interesting fight. We personally pilot one of these 57mm armed versions of this medium tank with two guns, so hopefully we should do a little bit of damage here, and immediately we've been <laughs> hit and penetrated, and there goes the uh, enemy Anzio. Okay, um, I thought that was going to be a little bit scarier of an enemy, to be honest, but clearly not. Uh, let's try and get up into a better position, because I don't have uh, computer-aided <laughs> aim, so I can't really see the enemies and hit them as well as some of the AI can, but there goes one of the T26 alikes uh, very quickly. <laughs> he really skylined himself to my whole team, so no surprise that he went quickly. Uh, I think something just bounced off me, but I didn't get a hit marker, so I'm not entirely sure where from. Probably that thing over there, actually, now I think about it, but um, I think we're okay. <laughs> I think we're doing all right. Um, so far, so good. My team is doing a swell job on this one. Uh, we've taken out five enemies to the loss of absolutely none of our tanks, which is shocking, to say the least, given this thing's general vibe. <laughs> um, hello, friend. Let's take out him, and I think I saw something else behind him further down the road as well. Uh, there it is. It's an armoured car. There's something else that's shooting at me now. Uh, whereabouts is that? I don't know, to be honest. Um, who is it? Is it you, Mr. Armoured Car? No, I don't think so. That probably would have killed you otherwise. Ah! It was a little tiny tank destroyer. <laughs> oh, no. I've reset. Damn it. <laughs> I was about to say, where was he? But uh, no, that was one of these things. I completely forgot I added those to the battle, to be honest. <laughs> oh, this thing's so ridiculous. This is the 207 uh, Model M, which is something I built off camera uh, based on our very first MBT that we built on this channel. And I still think this thing looks absolutely incredible. Uh, but more importantly, it's got a better stabilizer, it's got more armor, uh, and it's got quite a lot more penetration, which, to be fair, I don't think the penetration is going to come into play too much here. I want to protect my tracks. Um, I missed absolutely awfully on that first shot, um, and our reload is extremely slow. Hello, friend. Um, so we just got to be a little bit careful. The last thing I want is my mobility to be gone, and we end the battle in the exact same indecisive way as we did last time. Oh my gosh, I can't aim for the life of me right now. There goes my radio operator somehow. Um, <laughs> you couldn't make this up. This is somehow this 40 millimeter, uh, sorry, 37 millimeter arm, four cannon medium tank thing that looks straight out of another dimension. <laughs> it's one of the most dangerous tanks I've ever fought. Look at it. Look how many shots are hitting me. <laughs> Goodness me. Uh, there is absolutely no end of screen shake at the moment. Uh, 
there we go. Put a little bit of lead down range. Uh, wait for the reload, wait for the reload. Uh, don't lose a track as well. Let's just aim for the lower plate. There we go. Um, only 11 left to go. <laughs> we really have to whittle quite a few of them down. There's so many 40 mil... Uh, why do I keep saying 40 millimeters? 37 millimeters. I mean, it's close. Uh, hitting me right now. <laughs> I wonder where they went through to kill my radio operator. I miss him, honestly. Um, you are gone. There's another one back there. I can't see him for the trees, to be honest. Um, but I think I've got a fairly good idea based on where those shots are coming from. There we go. Um... Eight left somehow. Uh, it really doesn't feel like there should be eight left. <laughs> there's another one gone. And uh, I think there's so many bullet holes in the front of this tank now that we're starting to get a little bit of a frame rate issue from the number of decals being rendered. Just like we did with the uh, automatic loading <laughs> machine gun tank. My goodness me. Five enemies left now. Um, hello, I see two of them. They look so ridiculous coming over the hill like that. <laughs> and look, I've kept one of the 40 millimeters. 37 millimeters as a little trinket of our times that we've had together. Um, and I'm sure I will treasure it for many and many a moon. That didn't kill him. Uh, right, well, I'm swapping back to the APHE, even if it means a 15 second reload. I'll see you on the other side. I'm afraid I just can't take the mental weight of having bounced off a tank that look, looks like it was designed in the First World War. Where are you? I saw one in third person, but I cannot see it for the life of me in first person. Uh, there? Yeah, that did the job. Hello. Uh, just give me 15 seconds, if you would. I gave the instruction to that guy over there, but this guy seems to have taken his invitation. No thank you. Uh, I am waiting sincerely to shoot your friend. Hello, good sir. Yep, time has come, I'm afraid. And just one more to go. Whereabouts is it? Is it that one over there? Or is it stuck at the bottom of the hill? I feel like it's this guy. Yeah, it is. Oh my goodness me. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? We're ending it like that? The last tank and we bounce? That is... That is heartbreaking. Get out of here, bud. <laughs> there we go. Finally! Weirdly effective, those little things. Um, yeah, that's not how I expected this to go in the slightest. But if you have enjoyed this one, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. And if you have any ideas for other things that I can build in Sprocket, leave them either in the comment section below or in the suggestions channel of my Discord. And that will also be where the tank files for this thing are shared. But uh, anyway, I won't keep you for too long. Uh, goodbye! And a huge thank you to this channel's patrons, Badger, Burner Potato, Camjam135, Cody N, DJ Pete, Kavunga, Masu929, Sad Cat, Just Casual C601, Last Seven Eleven, Mark, Mildly Invested, Nicholas K, Rolls Bokken, Ryan Brody, Ryan Brody, The Kinesian Emperor, Zarashime, and Zite Wolverine. Thank you so much for your support.